Hey everybody, Richard Pie Guy here. Today I'm going to do a brief review of the Argon One Pi 4 V2 cooling fan case. This is a really impressive case uh, for a variety of different reasons, but I think first and foremost, the most exciting feature on here is it gives you the ability to go in and fully customize your cooling fan settings. So you can actually go in and assign different power levels and fan speeds to different temperatures from your Raspberry Pi 4. So let's say that we're not emulating any video games, but we're in Raspberry Pi's operating system and we're in LibreOffice doing some word processing. This is a task that really doesn't heat up your Raspberry Pi a whole lot. So there's really no reason to have your fan running at 100%. So right now with a lot of the cooling fans out there on the market, as soon as you power them on, the cooling fan kicks on, it's running at 100%, 100% of the time until you power it down and shut everything down completely. Um, if you are doing word processing or coding or different tasks that really don't heat up your system, then 100% speed 100% of the time is overkill. However, if you're gonna be primarily emulating video games on here, then I don't think that there's any issue with running it at 100% 100% of the time. You're really just gonna be getting a head start on cooling your Raspberry Pi 4, um, you know, prior to it really getting pushed to the point where you need it at 100%. So, Let's say that you're emulating PlayStation or N64 games. These are some uh, console collections that really push your system, you know, pulls a lot of power from it. So in turn, it does heat up your Raspberry Pi quite a bit pretty quickly. Um, you know, running at 100% prior to getting to a point where you really need it running at 100%, it's just going to help you in the long run. So, um, you know, if you're emulating games, do you really need the settings that, you um, you know, power this at a lower level for lower temperatures? No, because you are going to get up to those higher temperatures pretty quickly. So in the end, you're gonna be at that 100% power level and fan speed on here regardless. So um, with that said, uh, it is a nice feature to obviously have to, you know, gradually go up the, um, you know, power levels and fan speeds, but it's not 100% necessary if you're gonna be running um, you know, emulation station and, and stuff like that on RetroPie. So um, another nice thing about this is it's made really well. You know, this is a hard metal case, you know, aside from the underside here, which is plastic, if this were to fall off your desk or, you know, hit any type of flooring whatsoever, it's going to hold up. You're not going to have damage. Um, you know, maybe you get a little crack or ding in the bottom, you know, in extreme cases, but for the most part, it's going to hold up really well. You know, I haven't spiked this off the floor or anything like that, but uh, I could tell just by looking at it, it's, it's super solid. You're not going to have any issues with this breaking or anything like that. Now, um, it does have a power button on here, so you can actually go in and change your power settings too. You can have this so you utilize the button, or you can set this so as soon as you, you know, uh, hook up a power supply cable to it, it automatically powers on. Uh, which is what we see in most cooling fan cases, or if we were just plugging directly into the computer board here, that's exactly what would happen. As soon as that power supply hits the computer board, it automatically powers on. So now you can leave it so, you know, you utilize the button or it powers on automatically. You know, if you're using a power supply cable, you know, like this one here, which has the button on there, that's pretty much the same thing right there. So, um, you know, not a huge deal there. So now another thing I want to point out is you have some good uh, ventilation here, both sides. So you do get some decent airflow in here. Now, another thing I want to point out here is the size of this. It is actually about a third bigger than any of your other cooling fan cases out there. That's primarily because you do have that extender in here, which reroutes the audio jack and HDMI outputs. So you do end up with, like I said, about a third bigger here. Um, you can see right here is where it would typically end um, in terms of the size of the Raspberry Pi 4. So you do have this extra uh, inch and a half or so, you know, on this side, obviously, plus the uh, depth on here. So it is a little bit bigger. I typically like smaller cooling fan cases, but, you know, it's not big enough where it's really an issue. Um, some people like them chunkier and, and larger because they're, you know, maybe a little bit more durable. It's gonna be personal preference there. Uh, typically, I usually have this on my desk or uh, sometimes I'll put it out on my big screen in my living room. In both cases, I have a lot of crap on my desk, so uh, something that takes up less space is always better. Same thing with my uh, living room. If I'm going to be putting this on my mantle, um, usually my wife's gonna be complaining about stuff taking up space or not looking right. So something smaller obviously keeps her happy. 
Um, it's better on my ears. I'm sure everybody else can relate to that. So um, smaller is better in my opinion for cooling fan cases. So what else on here? Let's see. Um, another thing I want to point out is when it reroutes your HDMI, it also converts it. So you can see just by looking at this, it is full size HDMI now. So a lot of people overlook this. They go to, you know, set everything up and then connect it to their TV or monitor. And they realize then that their HDMI output is no longer that micro HDMI size. It is full size um, HDMI cables now. So you do need to get new HDMI cables. Most of us have these full size uh, regular HDMI cables laying around. That's what you typically, you know, be hooking up a PlayStation, Xbox, Blu-ray or DVD player. So we usually have those lying around. It's not a huge deal, but worth mentioning for sure. But other than that, um, all the ports are pretty much going to be the same. Their layout might differ slightly than how they would typically be on another cooling fan case, or if you were just, you know, obviously looking at the board in general. But for the most part, everything is um, pretty much the same. Another nice feature is the GPIO pins at the top here. We have this little magnetic cover so you can easily access them. Everything is labeled nicely, which is um, certainly convenient to be able to uh, take a look at that. You don't have to access diagrams on the internet or anything. Everything is labeled on there, so it does make that super easy if you're uh, plugging in anything into those pins. The case here you can see has two magnets on top, um, so you're not sliding this into grooves or anything. As long as you just kind of line it up, just let it go, and the magnet just you know locks it into place which is nice you don't have to worry about breaking any um, hinges or anything like that which um, you know over time can fall apart and cause you some issues so now another thing worth mentioning here is the fan inside is actually pretty small it's um, slightly smaller than a lot of the cooling fan cases out there um, it's smaller than the two that we use on our packages um, I don't think it really you know, hinders the performance in any way, but it is worth mentioning that it is a little bit smaller. Um, it's not loud at all. I did get a few questions from people asking me, um, you know, is the fan loud on here? It's not, you know, it's, it's pretty much right in line with all the other cooling fan cases. Um, you will hear, you know, a slight hum and obviously air movement as you typically would with a cooling fan case, but, um, you know, nothing loud or, or anything like that. Uh, I think that a lot of people were concerned because this is a metal case versus plastic. So maybe you hear, you know, the fan running inside there a little bit more, or if there's any sort of rattle or anything like that. Good news, there's nothing like that at all. It's, you know, exactly in line with all the other cooling fan cases out there in terms of, um, you know, volume coming from the fan itself. All right, so now that we've gone through all that in great detail, um, let's address the question of would I recommend this particular cooling fan case for anybody to purchase and use? I absolutely would. It's really a durable case, it's super reliable, really well made. But I first ask you, what are you primarily going to be using your Raspberry Pi for? Are you mostly going to be emulating retro video games or are you going to be using it for the tasks uh, primarily associated with the Raspberry Pi operating system? If you're going with the Raspberry Pi operating system tasks, then this is definitely the case for you because you're going to be utilizing those lower settings, you know, that assign different uh, power levels and fan speeds to your cooling fan case. If you're going to be primarily emulating retro video games, then it's only going to benefit you to start out um, using your fan at 100% just to get a jump on cooling your Raspberry Pi. Regardless of which game collection you're going to be using the majority of the time, you're eventually going to end up running this at 100%. So it's only going to benefit you to start off that way. And, you know, if we're comparing this to other cooling fan cases out there, like I said, this one has a smaller fan inside. Um, this cooling fan case is more expensive than a lot of the other cooling fan cases out there. So for emulating video games, I would just go with a cheaper cooling fan case that has a larger cooling fan in it. Um, you know, that starts off running at 100% and just stays running at 100% until you power it off. To me, that just makes the most sense. It also is the cheaper option. So... You know, those are the two routes I would go. Um, nothing against this. If you're going to use this for emulating, is it going to cause problems? Absolutely not. It just um, it just has features and settings on here that I really don't think that with emulating, you're going to utilize all that much. So that's my opinion. That's my advice to anybody that asks me. I'm by no means inserting and, um, you know, forcing my opinion on anybody else, but just putting it out there. That's what I would do. That's what I do. 
you know, I mostly emulate video games myself. So this to me is a little bit overkill and has, you know, just some settings and options that I don't feel like I would ever fully utilize. So for that reason, I would just go with that um, slightly less expensive cooling fan case that, you know, in turn has a larger cooling fan itself in it. And it also takes up less space, which I particularly like, but again, it's gonna be personal opinion there. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, definitely give us a thumbs up on the video itself. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of product reviews like this one, um, tutorials, gameplay demos, just a lot of great stuff in general. And then of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.